Let us now look at some examples of risk averse utility functions. In this lecture, or we have introduced the basic concept of risk aversion. We understood what it implies. More precisely, we understood that risk aversion implies decreasing marginal utility from money. A risk averse individual likes more money to less money or prefers more money to less money, but the marginal benefit of an extra dollar is decreasing. Of course, there are several utility functions that can represent such preferences. And here I want to give you three examples of popular utility functions that are often used to model risk averse behavior. Let us start with the quadratic utility function, which was very popular in finance applications. Your utility is equal to A times your wealth minus your wealth squared over two. If you take the first derivative with respect to W, your wealth, you get A minus W. And for A larger than W, which is assumed to, uh, to hold, the first derivative is positive. This means you enjoy having more money. If you take the second derivative, you see that the second derivative is negative, which means that you have decreasing marginal utility from money. You enjoy being richer, but the marginal dollar is less, is worth less than the dollar before. Another important class of risk averse utility functions are the constant absolute risk aversion utility functions, so called CARA utility functions. The CARA utility function is given by minus e to the power of minus a times w over a. You see the first derivative is e to the power of minus a times w, which is positive. And the second derivative is minus a times e to the power of minus a times w, which is negative. So you see here, we also have decreasing marginal utility from money. What does it mean, constant absolute risk aversion utility function? This means that the, your wealth level has no influence on your lottery decisions. Or put it differently, you suppose you prefer lottery A to lottery B for a, uh, a wealth of 10, then you will also prefer lottery A to lottery B for all other wealth levels. So constant absolute risk aversion means your wealth level has no influence on your risk decisions or your decisions under risk. Finally, let us also have a look at constant relative risk aversion utility functions, so-called CRRA utility functions. They are given by the class of utility functions where you have your utility equal to your wealth to the power of one minus a over one minus a. So if you take the first derivative, you see this expression here is positive. You take the second derivative and you get a negative second derivative. So again, you see these, this utility function represents risk averse preferences. Let us quickly talk about the implications or the, the consequences of constant relative risk aversion. Constant relative risk aversion means that or implies that if you get richer, you are more likely to take a certain gamble. So for example, you consider a, utility, a lottery where you can either lose $1 or 
gain uh, $2 each with 50% probability. If your total wealth is very low, let's say uh, $2, then you might want to uh, avoid this lottery. However, if you, if you grow richer and the lottery is, uh, becomes smaller compared to your wealth, then you are more likely to take this lottery. And constant relative risk aversion basically implies decreasing absolute risk aversion, meaning the wealthier I get, the less risk averse I am. Um, I think there's some evidence that this is, is likely to, to be the most relevant class of you of risk of versatility function is, is there is evidence that you uh, get less risk averse if you grow richer. And so it's, it's incorporated in many models. However, I think all of these three utility functions might come in handy if you, if you want to uh, just analyze the influence of risk aversion in some OM settings.